All right, so this morning's, this morning's uh, particular lecture is about testing in frameworks. We're talking about how do we test web requests? Like when somebody visits this particular, this particular page or makes a post request, that it does exactly what we expect. Um, and I think to just to get started, what is test-driven development? What is TDD and, and why is it useful? Because, you know, everything we just talked about, uh, if you add on to it later, you, you, know, you know what you're getting into. Yeah, it's, it's not a big mystery. Exactly, yeah. So writing tests up front means that you know what the functionality is supposed to look like before you write the code. And in the future, if you decide to change anything, it's still because you've written all those tests right at the beginning, it still does exactly the same thing that you expected. All right, so up front, like this is going to be kind of like a laborious and kind of painful process because testing is very, very difficult. But at the same time, testing is incredibly important when you're working on a real team. Every single bit of code that you write is expected to be tested. So if you give me some sort of feature, like I told you, hey, I want to be able to upload an image when I create you know, a coffee roast or something like that. I want to see a picture of the bag of coffee that it came from. Um, you have to write the test for that. You can't just say, it just works, because it just works is not, is not as good as like, you know, I have you know, reinforced it with this particular test, and you can read my test here. Um, so we're going to learn how to write a useful test for our code, and then we can practice it as we continue to learn Sinatra. Uh, we're going to use the R spec testing framework because we're already familiar with it. We've done it um, in the very beginning of class, and we've been doing it up, to, up until this point. Uh, and it's just nicer to use than some other frameworks. So we're going to try to write the test before we actually write the code, and then as a way to make and verify our hypotheses about the code and how it works. So I'm going to start off with this, this particular thing called R spec start. It's part of your um, curriculum, so you can just kind of click around and find it. Um, not click around. It's in today's curriculum. So we're going to follow the, the given when then kind of principle. For a test, usually you're going to have three things. Given, the steps that you need to do to, in order to set up the test. When, like the actual execution of the code that we're testing. And then the then, what are, what are we expecting to happen at the end? So we have our spec start. Let's take a look at everything. I'm just going to bundle install just to make sure I have everything. All right, looks like I didn't have everything. The green things means that you had they had to go out and make a request to go grab this code and then bring it and in, install it into my particular computer. The white one means it was already here. So inside of here, we have app.rb, which is just require Sinatra, and we have a bunch of routes. Get slash, slash means homepage, so it's when you don't have anything at the end of it, it's when I just go to like google.com, nothing else. Amazon.com, nothing else. That's what's called the root page, the, the home page right here. So when you see the slash, you're talking about the root page, the home page. Google.com with nothing else. Amazon.com with nothing else. eBay.com, nothing else at the end. That's the home page, the root page that you're going to start with. And then all it says is this is the root, the home page of the application. Inside of here, we used to have like a we used to have like a ERB file, like a views folder to separate out all of our views. Similarly, we have all a spec folder for all of our specs. So let's just jump in and take a look at what we've got here. Now we've kind of, let me just make this one giant page. We found, we have one test kind of given for us here. So it says, it lets me access the home page. So given, when, and then then. So following the given, when, then protocol, like we said, we're describing our Sinatra application, and specifically, what does it do? It lets me access the home page. So, given, do I need anything to get started? Well, let's just let's see, let's just see that this runs. So, if I do list everything and I just run bundle exec r spec, see what happens. So it says, when I run bundle exec r spec, I have three tests. Two of them are pending. You can tell that they're pending because they have the little X in the front right here. And then I have one test right here. It says it lets me access the home page. It looks like I have three examples, two pending, zero failures, which means that that one test is passing at this particular point. So we haven't really seen this particular syntax before inside of a uh, inside of an R spec file. 
But what we've got here is we've broken this test down into given, when, then. And as you are just starting to learn our spec, I, exp I would highly recommend just highlighting given, when, then, and then just kind of typing it out for yourself and just writing those tests for you. Given. Given is that thing that says, what steps do we need in, actually, in order to actually set up the test? In our case, do we need anything to set it up? Like, do you need to do anything else before you visit google.com? Not particularly. So given, I don't need to do anything. When is what, what am I actually executing? What code am I actually going to need to run in order for this, to, for this test to run? So when is basically like, uh, what are you executing? And then then is, what do you expect your response to look like? Given, what do you need to set up a test? What do you need to do in order to set up the test? When, what are you executing? And then, then what do you expect your response to look like? So given, I don't need anything. What, well, the, when, what am, I, what am I gonna be executing? So I'm making a, a get request to just slash. And then, then, what do I expect the response to look like? I expect last response to be okay. So last response, if you take a look inside of here, um, we've never dealt with this. There's no, I guess there's no, uh, like there's no variable inside of here that has last response. So where did last response come from? Inside of the gem file here, we have something called rack test on line seven. This particular gem gives us the helper method last response. So whenever I make a response, and whenever I make a request, it saves whatever response that comes back as the variable last response. So is B okay? Is that equivalent to uh, 200 status? Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. So the, the to be okay is basically saying like, I expect the status code to be somewhere in the 200s. And again, what are the what are the what does 200 mean? Good to go. Good to go. 300 means redirect. Redirect. Let me introduce you to my friend. I, I acknowledge that you spoke to me, but I'm just going to redirect you to my friend at the bar. 400 means server. what's that? Error. error, but not not necessarily a server error. What's that? No. 400 means that something you did was wrong. So like if you visited a URL that doesn't exist, that's your fault. Like I, I don't, it's not my fault that you entered an extra G at the beginning of Google, like GG Google or something like that. Um, so it's a user error of some sort. So they're just gonna say no to you at the bar because of something that you did. Maybe you didn't shower that day. Maybe you, you know, maybe you have bad game like me, right? Like they're just gonna say no because it's your fault. The 500 on the other hand is a server error internal. Like, I'm sorry, I'm dealing with stuff right now. It's not you, it's me. I had bad seafood. I had bad whatever, you know, like irritable bowel, bowel syndrome, right? Something inside of me, the server side is going wrong. So this be okay is something that's built in that just says like, I expect like this particular thing, uh, I expect the status code to be a 200. So let's actually just put a pry right here. So binding.pry. And let's take a look at what last response even looks like. The bundle exec R spec will run all the specs, and here I am stopped right at this particular point. Let's take a look at what last response looks like. And so last response is quite big. You know, it's all of this code right here. It's a mock response that comes back, and you can kind of see it looks like uh, th there's a body that was returned that says this is the home page of the application. So again, when I make a request, a get request to slash inside of this particular app, it says, okay, what well, I'm hearing you. I'm going to execute this particular line of code on line four. This is the home page of the application. So I expect last response, maybe I do last response.body. I can see this is the home page of the application. When I also do last response.status, you can kind of see there's my 200 status code. That's also what it means to be okay. <clears throat> uh, I can probably rewrite this test. Maybe I'll just do last response.status to equal 200. This and the previous line are totally the same thing. Last response dot status to equal 200. 
these two lines are synonymous. Your choice on which one you like. Uh, I'm a personal fan of this one because I like to know what the status code actually is rather than just, is it okay? Like, it's your call. It doesn't really matter. Isn't it between 200, like anything to 200? Yeah, we can, we, can, we can do that as well. We can say the, like the first number is two, is two or something like that. Yeah, that is, yeah. yeah. But yeah. So I, I, like, I like this one personally. You, your choice on which one you prefer to use. We'll go back to be okay, just because it looks a little nicer. Now, you may have noticed that this test is not really that impressive because all we tested was we got a 200 status code back. We didn't actually test that the body of it was what we expected. The, maybe even the images on there is not what we expected. Like you could have made a, you could have honestly made a request to like anywhere else and created another route called anywhere else, but that is not actually testing what the, what, what the, what the test is trying to say. This test is saying it lets me access the homepage and I did, and if I visited anything but the homepage and I had a route for that, this test would still pass. And that's not, it's, that's not a good test, right? You, right now we're just testing that we're getting a 200 status code, but that's not what we, that's not what we want. In terms of like the order of like usefulness of like, we wanna check these particular things about a request. Number one, that they had the intended effect on our database and our state. So we haven't gotten to like actually creating what, what's called CRUD apps. We're gonna get into that tomorrow, but it's kind of like when I press submit on this form, like it creates a new tweet for me. When I submit uh, update, like it actually updates my particular username or something like that. So number one, the most important thing is, did it have the intended effect on our database? The second most important thing is number two, did they handle the computations that we wanted to like to compute correctly? Number three, did they handle uh, errors the way that we wanted? Did it return uh, the content we expected? And then the last one is, uh, was the request successful or not successful? So we have the least, the use, least useful one right here. It's still important, but it's not very useful. Let's say that we want to look for things like, does it return the content that we expect? So instead of doing last response to be okay, I want to test that last response.body actually has all of the things that I expect to have on the home page. So I'm going to replace it, this, this whole thing with expect last response to be okay, to be expect last response.body to equal this is the home page. Make sense? So instead of just testing, is this a 200 status code? I'm testing, does the content that shows up with last response equal what I expected to, to want it to equal? So it looks like this is the home page of the application. This is the home page. Let's just make sure that it, this passes. I'm going to exit here and run the test one more time. Ooh, I don't like this. It says, I expected to get this is the home page, but instead I got this is the home page of the application. How, how can we, I guess, fix this? Remember that red, green refactor, we just, this is turning red. Now we want it just to turn green and then we can refactor it later. Wouldn't you want it to be something that was hidden and not necessarily showing on the screen anyway? So you could put it in like a meta tab? I could put it in a meta tag, but as of right now, like all I want to do is just, it's kind of like um, when you go to Google, uh, when you go to amazon.com, right? On the top right hand quarter and you're logged in, I expect to see welcome first name. So mine says welcome Jonathan. I expect yours to say welcome Leanna or something like that. So I don't like I I want to test in this particular case. I want to test the actual content that's on the screen for right now. So for me, I said I expect last response dot body. So the response that comes back from the server, I expect that body of that response to have to equal the text of this is the home page. But instead, I got this is the home page of the application. So how do I? It's red right now. How do I just make it turn green? Use regex to, to say this is the home page. Anything else? Yeah, I could I could do that. Uh, I could also just copy this. And it's like it's all about little wins right here. This is the home page to equal. This is the home page of the application, and everything turns green. 
But I think Sharif, you had a uh, you had an interesting comment. How do I? Can you talk about that one more time? You use regex so that this is a home page, and then you add on anything to your home page. Yeah. So they just all yeah. that needs to be valid is this is a home page. Sure. So I just want somewhere on. So there's something called Matt to March to match. So I expect the last response, the response I get back from the server, that body, to match this regex. This is the home page, which means just means somewhere inside that body, something says this is the home page directly on there. Let's take a look. Okay, so this this one will pass. So it doesn't matter if it says this is the home page of the application and the greatest website in the world. Like I can, I can literally add anything I want here because as long as it says this is the homepage somewhere on there, like this test will pass. So this is a be much better test than just looking for a very, very strict thing on the page. Now, if, if you're going to google.com, it should just say google.com, it should say Google somewhere on that page. And if you're going to go with like copyright 2018 or something like that on the bottom, maybe you want to do an exact match. But this one's good enough for us right now. So given when then, so we'll let's write a few more tests and hopefully we'll be it we'll be in a good spot for you to get started. So let's take a test at number take a look at test number two, line 15. It greets me when I provide a name to the greet action. As of right now, it doesn't really do anything. Like we have the code kind of written for us already, but we want it, we want it to we want to follow actual test driven development. So we write the test first, we make it fail, then we write the write the code to make it pass. So I'm gonna take this away from being a pending test to a real test by removing the X in the front. Adding a do and then adding an N. I'm going to, since I'm not very confident with my R spec skills, I'm just gonna copy this first test right here and just dump it in. I'm going to get rid of this here because I don't need it yet. All right. So given, what do I need in order to set up the test? When, what, am, what, are, what, what code are you executing? And then what do you expect your response to look like? So I'll write this one first. And then the last one, we will uh, we'll write that one together. So code, what are we executing? I think it's just post slash greet with params. And then what do I expect my response to look like? Expect last response uh, body to maybe include. Um, gone. All right, so given is what I need in order to set up the test. Now, when you are, when you are filling out a form and you press the submit, everything gets saved into a hash. What is that hash called? Params, right? So when you when you click through a website and you fill out all the stuff and you press submit, it's always saved as params. Almost you, you, across the board, it's saved as as the keyword params because those are the parameters that your user has given you. When you're writing stuff with a when you're writing like code, like I don't have the ability to click through an actual like like there's no form for me to kind of like click through at this particular point in time. So I need to post directly to greet with parameters. So I need a few things to get started. I'm just doing params equals a hash. And that hash is going to have a name. And the name's value is going to be John. I, I, instead of su submitting it directly on a form, I'm just creating a hash called params. So that's the given. This is what I need in order to set up the test. What code am I actually executing is the when. So I'm going to post to slash greet with these particular parameters. So I expect my last response.body to include the word John. So I'm not saying it's going to match. I'm not saying it's going to equal. I just expect my name literally to be in there. Would it be better to include uh, the value for the params name key? Yep. So let's let's just run this to see if it passes, and then we'll get back to that one. I didn't expect anyone to pick up on that one so quickly. All right, bundle exec R spec. We have three examples, zero failures, and one pending. So it's still it's good. 
the last when I posted to slash greet with these parameters, when I posted to slash greet with the params, it included that body that was returned back to me included the name John. Now, Sharif had an interesting point. He he said, wouldn't it be a better idea instead of just a hard, instead of hard coding John in here that I should just do params name like that, right? Because the issue right now is Sharif started to he's starting to develop those uh, those code smell skills. He's starting to see like it's not the strongest test because what if somebody adds one by accident, you know, or like they try to they try to save by accident instead of holding down the command key, they just have an S at the end. All of a sudden, this code now falls apart. You know, it said hello, expected hello John to include Johns. So you mess it up one place and then you mess up all the tests. This could be, you could be going down a rabbit hole for quite a, quite a long time. Hard coding in general is something you want to avoid. Hard coding being like, I expect this exact thing to be in, inside of here. So I'm just gonna do params of name. And let's see if this passes. Three examples, zero failures and one pending. You can see these two little green dots over here, meaning that it's pass, pass, and then the yellow is pending. This is a stronger test because I have a, par I have a set of parameters that I'm passing through. I can change this name to whatever I want. I could change it to Steve, I could change it to Aaron, I could change it to, to Poop, I could change it to whatever I'd like, and this test will still pass because I'm just expecting the body to include this particular value. So I like that particular test. All right, let's jump over to one last test. I'm gonna remove the X, do and end. I'm gonna get you started here. All right, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this, let's get rid of this. So tell me what I need to do. Again, we're doing test-driven development. So the code's not gonna work right now. We're gonna make it work later. So given, what do I need in order to set up this particular test? An empty string. An empty string? Or you could do like params equals name and then empty string. Like that. Okay, so you're saying that I need the parameters in order to set up this test. Okay. When, what code am I executing? Post greet params. Mm -hmm. Post greet. Params. Comma params means I'm when I post to slash greet, I'm also giving it the params. So can you pass in multiple variables separated by commas? I can. Yeah. But generally speaking, I I would just throw everything inside of params. Okay. And then finally, what do I expect my response to look like? Now given given this thing, what do I expect my response to look like? String. You could do something like that, sure. Expect last response dot body to include. Please enter a name or something like that. Be something like that. Um, I expect that to be the body, but it says it returns an error. I guess this is legitimate. Let's do that. So we'll bundle exec R spec. So remember red. It's red right now. We're going to make it turn green. It says hello blank to include please enter a name. Hmm. All right, so let's just come back over here. This one should be a pretty simple. This should be a pretty simple uh, check. See if it works. So it seems like what's being returned to me when I run this test is hello, literally nothing, exclamation mark. And instead, I want it to read, please enter a name. So how do I change this particular code to make this work? In app RB, you can have an if statement after line seven for params if it's empty. Like, yeah, params that name. And then if it's equal to an empty string, maybe? Then it would, yeah. Something pretty simple like that, right? If whatever you enter is just an empty string, 
please enter a name. Otherwise, hello, whatever your name is. Pretty simple. So the idea behind this kind of test-driven development, we're talking about, I ex like, so we're following this given when then pattern. So given what do you need in order to set up the test? So we figured that one out, like when we are testing a post request, we know that we need to have parameters. If I'm, whereas in this first one, I don't need to do anything ahead of time in order to visit this, the home page right here. Like I don't need anything to set it up. But in order to use the post method, it looks like I need to use params in some way. So that's why I said, this first one, I don't need anything to be given. The second and third test, I expect actually need this particular params to be used. When is like, what's the actual code that's being executed? What do you want it to actually test? Like what, what code do you need in order to actually verify that something's gonna happen? And then finally, the then, what do I expect the response to look like at the very end? So I think we did pretty well with this. Um, one last thing I wanted to point out before I kind of release you to Experiment and have fun. Again, all the stuff we covered today is directly here inside of your um, directly here inside of your uh, curriculum. Today we have been like up to this point we have specific folders for specific things. The spec folder holds all of your tests. The views folder holds all of your views. And what in today's example of rock paper scissor we're gonna be working with images. So you're gonna have things that are called static files. So inside of here, like, you're not gonna actually need to use this, but this is an example of what, like, up, up to this point we had, remember, we had views specifically for, like, things that show up on the screen. We have, um, what's the other one? Views, specs, the spec folder for all the specs, and then everything that's served publicly, like images, style sheets, JavaScripts, these are called static assets we're gonna put inside of public. So all your images will go inside of images, all your JavaScript files are gonna go inside JavaScript, all your style sheets are gonna go inside of here in style sheets as well. So this is what we've got. We've got two challenges for today. One of them is called rock, paper, scissors. The other one is called Mad Libs. Rock, paper, scissors is kind of fun. It's uh, exactly what you think of it. It's you choose something, the computer will choose something and you'll just see who wins. When you take a look inside of here, you're gonna have spec folders specifically for all of your specs. And then inside of images, you're gonna have all of these uh, under public images, you're gonna have all of your image files. So you're gonna have you know, paper, which this just looks like you're about to slap somebody, honestly. Um, you have rock, and then you have scissors. So these particular things, because they are outside, they, you rely on them externally, these are public facing things. It's stored inside of the public folder. Any questions on anything before I stop the recording?